WGPR Detroit HD2. You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. FM 88.1 WHPR, Highland Park. WVIE 107.3 FM Charlotte, Amalia, Virgin Islands. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. You wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I. <laughs> This is the Talk Beat Jones, and I am Billy E. Jones, and we're excited to be here today. Yes, we are. We are so excited to be here to see you this morning, this evening, whatever time it may be on the Talk Beat Jones. You can prepare to make those calls, and let's talk. Let's see what's going on. Let's see how we can put it out here for the world to understand what's on your mind. On the Talk Beat Jones. Again, I am Bill E. Jones and certainly appreciate your calls and uh, want your opinions, want to make you feel because we got people all around the world that's listening to you and they want to know what's your problem and how are you going to come up with a solution? And what else is happening, not just on your front door, but across the other part of the United States and then going outside of what's happening in the United States? Where else? Is there news breaking? Well, it could be anywhere. And we want to know what's on your mind on the Talk Beat Jones. Remember, we're on the air every Wednesday live on a Wednesday from 10 a.m. until 11. Let your friends know they can pick us up Wednesdays from 10 to 11 all around the world. Roku, Amazon, Apple, and of course, Cable Channel 90 and locally 15.2 and uh, we have a repeat broadcast on Sundays that's right repeat broadcast on a Sunday so that you too can tell your friends if you missed him live check him out on the TV on Sunday on 15.2 and family we do continue to ask you to share this program so that the people can get the information you know, some people like to just talk, talk. We like to talk, entertain, and inform on the Talk Beat Jones. I see I have a caller. Let's see who's waiting. Caller, you're live. Uh, let's find out your first name and where you're calling from, please. Hello? There we go. Hello? Hello? Yes, you're live uh, on the Talk yes. Beat Jones. and. Uh, I am Billy E. Jones, and let's get familiar for the world to know who is on the line. Who is on the line with me, please? And let me do this real quickly. I'm Leo from Oakland. Okay. Also, uh, Miss Michelle Broughton, I believe, is going to be with the uh, student count. Uh, they're doing student counting so that they can know how much money the schools are going to receive. So I'm not sure if Michelle will be, Ms. Michelle Broughton will be able to join us today. But Michelle, if you happen to be watching and doing in between your programming of the students, uh, need you to try to reach the station by using that uh, 4336 line. Yes, Michelle, use the 4336 line. The other line, 42 is not rolling over, so I need you, to, Michelle, if you call, to use the 868-4336. Thank you very much. And uh, top of the day, top of the morning, top of the life to you, Mr. Leo Brazil. And before we get started with Mr. Leo Brazil, family, uh, what's on your mind? You, of course, you're able to join us, talk with us, and uh, have it heard all around the world for us to understand what's on your mind. 
Well, quickly, what's on my mind, I'm looking real quickly at uh, you're talking about people taking bribes and people, I'm going to put you on hold, Mr. Leo, uh, talking about people taking bribes in the office, et cetera. And I'm wondering, we got a guy in Taylor, a mayor in Taylor. Uh, now, he is accused of pocketing campaign cash and lottery tickets. Cash and lottery tickets. And when you read it, now he is still the mayor, and this has been going on since 2017, 2000, uh, yeah, 2017, and he's still the mayor. He's on indictment. They're after him. They've, done, they've already concluded with the raids, etc. and back in 2019, and he's still the mayor. Uh, you find that he have these people that did the thing. They offered him money. They uh, did the uh, work on his home, his uh, other home, lakefront home. Uh, man has a store that he was able to cash tickets, uh, receive uh, lottery tickets. Uh, the person that he was dealing with and getting that money from, too. Uh, another developer was able to use money on his credit card to be passed to the mayor. Uh, they've shown where he's gotten a whole lot of money. So these politicians, these people who go in this political world and they're doing these things and no. Now he has continued going to try to be the mayor. Now he apparently did not fill out his campaign finances and uh, so he was not able to actually be on the ballot, but he tried to do a right in situation. So he's not trying to go away, not trying to go away. Wow. Why don't he just run away until he sits in time in jail? But family, we are also looking at the situation that the Republicans are placing Joe Biden in a terrible situation now I know that people are saying what am I talking about let's see if Mr. Leo Bazile can assist and help or lead me because he is the person the political extraordinary person Mr. Leo Bazile oh excuse me there we go Mr. Leo Bazile yes sir I'm questioning can you bring us up real quickly without taking a lot of time because I want to hit a few subjects can you tell us what does it mean if this bill that President Joe Biden is trying to get through, what is the implication if he can't pull this off? What is going to happen to our country? Well, that's a, that's a general question, and I keep hearing the echo. It's okay what you're hearing. You have to deal with that, please. All right, well... Uh, I can't speak to the to the to, to to which Biden bill you're talking about. There there are four principal bills that must be passed. Two of them have to do with budget, and uh, two of them have to do with voter rights. So, we're speaking which, of the, which we're one speaking, are you talking about? We're speaking of the money. Huh? We're speaking of the money. Money. The, yeah. Well, that, that 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 one bill is a is the infrastructure bill which uh, the Senate has passed, and the infrastructure bill won't get passed by the House progressive unless the Senate passes the, the, uh, the, uh, the big budget bill that has all of the items that we're concerned about. Mm -hmm. Yes. And like child care and health care and and schooling and those things are in the three trillion dollar budget bill, mm -hmm. which needs to get past the filibuster rule. And the filibuster rule is being used by the Republicans to hold up the the three trillion dollar bill. Now, Mr. Leo Brazil, you've been around for a little bit of time. Uh We've gone through this. this. This is something that happens every year, correct? Every year. Every year. But can you give me the difference this year as a potentially in past years, or maybe we're reading things in his, into this that we shouldn't, but 
is this going to be a more contentious type of situation between the Republicans with the new Republicans? And when I say that, they are more in the Trump style of let us delay, delay, cause problems, cause problems, delay, delay, cause problems, and be darned what the American public is thinking because the more problems that we give to the more people in America, give to the American public, the harder it's going to be to reelect Democrats. What is your thoughts, sir, please? Well, again, this is, this is a very complicated issue that can't be talked about in a, in a, in a five minute talk program. This is, this is, this is that this is basic, American government and constitutionalism, which most people don't know and don't understand. They do understand their home budget. So it's the income problem. We have to get taxes in. Once we get the taxes in, then we have to have a spending bill. And the spending bill then has to allegedly equal the income that's coming in. But unfortunately, people want to spend more money than is coming in, mm -hmm. which is one problem on the Democratic side. And on the Republican side, the problem is, is they want to curtail the amount of money coming in mm -hmm. in taxes, especially if it's from the rich. But the bottom line is this. One of the things, because like you said, it's too complicated to get into a whole lot of conversation, and we really don't have that time, as you know, that's what you're indicating but one of the problems with that is if this is not pushed through, persons who are restating, who are waiting to receive monies from their Social Security checks on a monthly basis, you're going to have a problem because the persons who are issuing those that issuing that money says, if this bill is not passed, if this budget is not signed, we're not going to get no money. We're not going to get our money. So what I'm trying to do is break it down. I mean, all this, the language and the logistics, et cetera, is all that's good. But what we do is try to talk to the everyday folks, like you said, who don't understand. So all we need to do is reach out and pick something that we can understand, such as if you're on Social Security and the bill is not, and if this is not passed in time, you are subject to be delayed with your delayed or don't receive your social security check as well as other paid entities correct or not yeah well let's just let's, let's make it simple let's keep it at a, at one dollar <laughs> you have spent one dollar in in 2020 so you expect to spend one dollar in 2021 problem is is that the dollar has gone down three cents it's only worth 98 cents now. So you need a dollar just to stay even. So in order to stay even, you got to spend a dollar and three cents this year just to stay even. But if you didn't raise the taxes to a dollar and three cents, you're still only going to get a dollar in, hmm. and you're going to be three cents short. Okay. So where are you going to get the three cents? You have to borrow it. That's mm -hmm. where they mean by national debt. You have to raise the national debt to a dollar and three cents just to break even. But to raise the debt, but to raise it, it's the point. You, is, the to point, raise the debt, you need no objection. That's the point. We're trying to just break it real quickly. The and the Republicans are objecting. Thank you. Thank you. That's the process. We know what you're going to have to do, but the process is that the opposition is stuck. They have a plan, they're operating the plan, and the plan is we want to give this man, this Democratic Party, we want to give them as much problem legally, illegally, whatever it takes to make it so that going into the 2022 elections, folks are going to be pissed off and they're going to not necessarily say, well, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden. He's this, he's that, he didn't get this done, he, he's not the person and I'm not voting for Joe Biden. I'm going to vote for Trump or one of his Trumpites. I'm going to make sure that they are ready to take the, uh, uh, the power in 2024. Seems to be the game plan. 
Yeah, they're trying to get to the midterm election. Next election is, is, is next year. Thank you. In 2022, in June. And Thank so you. they don't want the Republicans, I mean, the Republicans don't want the Democrats to have any victories Thank going you. into that election. They want them to be able to say, you didn't get your Social Security check because the Congress didn't pass it. Mm-hmm. But what they didn't tell you is that the majority of the Congress of Democrats were ready to pass it, but you need a supermajority to pass the budget because of the filibuster rule. Well, what they may need is, uh, in California, one ticket, one ticket did what? Do you know, Mr. Leo Brazil, what that one ticket in California got? No. That one lottery ticket in California received that $600 million. One ticket, uh, excuse me, six hundred and ninety nine point eight million dollars is what that one ticket was worth. And a person in California won that. Wonderful. OK, so call your relatives, call your friends and uh, see who got that money and send me up a little bit. I could use a little bit. The station here could use a little bit. Uh, my dog could use a little bit. You know, I mean, we, we need a little bit here, you know, a couple hundred wouldn't, you know, a couple hundred thousand wouldn't hurt. So if you got that Powerball winning and you want to make it a great investment, here we are. Here we are. Okay. Not asking for a million, just a hundred, two thousand. Leo, I can loan you some, huh? Absolutely. But, uh, I'm, I'm good. You good? Yeah, don't use me lying. Okay. <laughs> uh, here's another quickie situation. High court hears arguments over Michigan's inmates' bid for a new trial. Now, this is something I knew would, is something I wanted to understand. And it says that the justices on the U.S. Supreme Court acknowledged Tuesday uh, the need to clarify what, uh, what standards federal judges should apply and when in cases of state prisoners seeking new trials with several suggesting the current matrix of te- uh, test is confusing. Uh, so what is that essentially, or what are they saying there? Uh, she said the Michigan case is a, per- well, I'm not going to go into all that reading, but the Supreme Court is saying that the way they are coming across and doing this is confusing to the judges. So what are the what are what are they saying there, uh, Mr. Leo Brazil? And just I know you don't you're not privileged. You haven't read this, and I'm throwing things to you just off the top of my head to your head. And um, why are you doing that? Because I'm not asking you to go and research it. I'm saying you and I just having a conversation as we were standing on the corner talking and having some coffee. And, well, that's uh, the problem. That's the problem. That's what most people do. Talk about it. Uninformed, don't know what they're talking about, but okay. they're talking anyway. Okay. And, and so 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 we're we we're, we're filling space here with a with a legal case in Michigan that I don't know anything about. The only thing that I know about is generally I can talk about federalism, the relationship of the federal government and the state government in terms of their interpretation of the law. Okay. What's your question? Okay, no question. I want to know what is your feelings in California? There's that big oil spill, right? What is the situation? Well, mm-hmm. well, in California, we've been at least my side of the political spectrum has been against oil drilling off the coast for precisely this reason: that you can have an accident and it can ruin a lot of the economy of the state, and so. Let's look for alternatives to drilling offshore. And those alternatives we've been looking at has been wind and uh, solar. But that's too progressive for the rest of the world because they want to do the old Oklahoma drill, drill, drill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so what is going to be the the situation that this is not the first time they've talked about a ship and an anchor causing a, a pipeline problem uh you know i mean that happens is that right or what anything that man builds can break down in canada we have a, a pipeline that's coming from canada to uh, over in michigan and 
the Michigan wants that pipeline shut down. It employs a heck of a lot of folks, uh, and Canada says that they're going to use something that was done in a treaty that was in 1970 something, so that they will continue to be able to operate. Right. Mm-hmm. How about that? They're not concerned about the climate change. And speaking of the climate change and, and uh, what has happened with the rains, et cetera, folks out here in, right in the Detroit area, uh, the Great Lakes Water Authorities that was created to help our water situation become greater, better, took our water uh, situation from the hands of Detroit. The person is saying it's going to take three to six billion dollars, three to six billion dollars so that the citizens, and I can't speak for all the other places, but the citizens in Detroit will not have to go through the flooding, but that's talking about three to six billion dollars in restructuring there. And uh, so we have the folks asking, we have had our basements flooded in the last three rains. In the last three rains, we've had our blood, our basements flooded. So are we going to have to go through waiting and waiting each time it rains, looking up and saying, God, is it going to flood my house this time again? Is this a way to live, family? Is this a way to live? But Mr. Leo Brazil, can you go through the idea to the best of your perspective on how climate change is making a difference if you feel that way? Well, I, I do feel that way because that's, that's the wonderful thing about climate change. You can actually feel it and see it. So if you are feeling a lot of heat that you don't normally feel, in in these particular months, you can say, well, that has changed. It usually it usually gets hot like this in July, but here we are having it in 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 early spring or or late fall. So there's a change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Now, is that a permanent change, or is that a cyclical change, meaning that in a cycle, or is it something that just a uh, a momentary change because uh, we had a volcano explosion in Indonesia that threw the atmosphere off, and that's only going to last for one season. Okay. So what are you saying? So we, we know that there's change, but we don't know what's causing it. Yeah. And so we, we say, well, what's causing it is burning all of this fossil fuel. The fossil fuel industry is going to say that's not true. It's not us. Okay. It's God. Okay, but and how can you prove them wrong? Okay, but the situation here is shortening it down is that we are going through, regardless of the X's, the Y's, the chromosomes that make up the, chroma, the, uh, uh, the weather change, the weather climate is changing. That's factual. So what are you going to do? That's the question is what are we going to do? We're seeing That's that in Michigan right now in Detroit, they're saying that the pipes are set up to only receive uh, 1.75 uh, part of the water. But when the rains that we've been having is so much greater than that, that the paint, that the pipes cannot drain that water, can uh, can hold the amount of water they need to be able to flush through these pumps fast enough to withdraw the water so that the water will not flood our basements. Okay, so you, you're talking about a project that takes planning and execution. Execution and planning maybe take you five years. So five years from now, you're going to be able to solve this problem that you have today. You hit, maybe. You, you hit it on the nose because that's what they're saying again, is that it's going to take, because we're looking at it now, the lady who was head of the situation there, she resigned after this last time. And uh, a person who was on the board was elevated to the CEO. The person who was a CEO resigned, but she stay, kept her position on this board. And they're saying it's going to take 
three to five years of planning in order to get this situation rectified. And it's going to take three to three to six billion dollars. Billion. That's B. That's what a B. Billion dollars to get this situated there. And it's going to take a long time because you got to go through all these areas. Those pipes are not not sufficient with the way the climate is changing. So, you know, that's that's one thing that we have to look at uh, that's not really working really well. Also, before we go into a commercial break, we want to know about uh, how is the COVID situation being handled? And are you guys in California, uh, are you guys doing well with the COVID situation? And then I'll tell you about Detroit. All right. Tell me about California is what I'm asking. After the break? No, no, I'm going to, this is going to have the conversation. I want it now. Oh, okay. Well, conversation-wise, COVID-wise, we're doing fine. We we, 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 we are about to uh, require all school children to have to have, have the vaccination here in California. So that's the main thing that we're concerned about, getting our economy up and going. And the economy is being delayed by women not being in the workforce. Then the women are being delayed in the workforce because they can't get child care. They can't get child care because the federal government haven't passed the budget. So all these things are interconnected and causing problems. But California is such a rich state. We can we can we can we can go into our piggy bank for a little while until everything kicks back to normal. Some of the states that are smaller and not rich like us can't do that. Slappers, slappers, slappers. <laughs> now, when you say that, let's look out at the waters. Let's look at the shippings, the ships out on the waters. Have right. You, have you seen that? Can you give us an overview about what are we looking for? in terms of as a consumer with all those ships not being able to be unloaded. Okay, they can't be unloaded because you're not buying the stuff on the shelf. And the shelf is being un not unloaded because people are oh, staying home. Oh, 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 wait, 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 hold up. I want the family to hear what you just said, and I want you to go back to your first step part of your conversation there. And that first part of the conversation when I was asking about that was what, sir? The shelves. You were asking, you were asking about the ships offshore, right? Being unloaded, right? They're sitting out in the waters. They can't, they can't even get to the ports. But you said something that I think is very important about the shells. Tell us about why you said. Or can you repeat that? No, no, no. Tell, ask me the question because I don't know what you're talking about. You went on to say when I was asking about the ships being on the waters, not being able to be unloaded because they can't get to the port. And you stated that, yeah, because the shells, they're waiting to empty the shells. Yeah. It's the supply chain. Expound, you, please. You, 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 you want to consume something. So you go to the store, and it should be on the shelf. You want, you want toilet paper. You go there, and there's no toilet paper on the shelf. And, they, and they still ask the store people, why? They say, well, the truck hasn't brought it. And they say, well, the truck has to bring it from the warehouse, and then we put it on the shelf, and then you buy it. So this, the, 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 the toilet paper is on the shelf in the warehouse, but we don't have a truck driver to drive it here because the truck driver is at home with COVID. Or even if the truck driver is available, he goes to the warehouse. There's nothing in the warehouse because the people that were supposed to bring it from the ship to the warehouse couldn't unload the ship because the ship is in the water. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole supply chain is backing up from the consumer, you, the buyer, all the way to the manufacturer who manufactured it in China and put it on the container and sent it to Los Angeles. So now we as the consumers, we are now looking again because they're talking about there's going to be shortages because those ships cannot get to port and then even after they are into port it's going to take quite a while for them to be unloaded and the backlog of all those ships sitting, sitting in the waters waiting to be in, uh, brought into port it's it, the backlog is just getting crazy and again that's our supplies that as we are what was that so it's the basic question of supply 
basic question of economics is supply and demand. Okay. If there's no toilet paper on the on the shelf and everybody wants toilet paper, the people who do have toilet paper are going to get swamped, meaning that they will determine how much they're going to charge for that toilet paper. Mm. So it, when the shortage of supply and the high demand means that prices are going to go up. So tip, tip, tip. Tip to the family listening to this program, and of course, remember our program. You can watch it uh, seven days a week because we're on demand. You can go to demand if you want to and pick up the program and get this information because you may have heard about the program from a friend, and they didn't share it with you. So you can go to On Demand, TV33 On Demand, and uh, you can watch this program, get all this information, because, again, we're talking stuff that other folks are not talking, and that's the whole idea about the Talk B. Jones. Let everybody just cover everything else and do all these other particulars and get all that repeat conversation, et cetera. But we give it to you that somebody is listening. Somebody is being informed, and I'm going to inform you to this. Start buying your essentials now. Start buying your essentials now. Because remember, if those ships are not being able to come into port, the supplies cannot get to the bottom line. I don't care about the trucks. I don't care about the warehouse. I don't care. The bottom line is you're not going to be able to go to the register and buy those products. You're not going to be able to get it because they're not going to have them. So start buying your essential products now so you won't be caught into that standing in that long line are going in and say, oh, they sold out of this because them other folks are going to start buying it in bulk, not just from Costco, Sam's Club. They're going to buy, come to your other stores and buy them out too. So get yourself ready, start buying, go to them stores and store. I'm going today and start buying me my supplies that I basically need and start stocking up. It's going to be a problem. And then when it becomes a problem, pull this video out and say, I, he told you. But you, 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 you can't buy it if you don't have a Social Security check. Tell and them. the Social Security check can't come unless they pass the budget. And the Republicans won't let them pass the budget. So it's, again, there's another problem. you got the, you got the demand for the product, but you don't have the money to buy it. And we're looking at the fact that when you speak about that Social Security check, we're talking about knowing this is uh, October. No, this is, yeah, this is October. So, family, we're talking about you should be on, your, on, 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 on the bridge telling your representatives that they need to jump off the bridge and make this vote because they're leaving you open in November. If we're haggling with this in November, for those of you who get your checks on the first of the month, third of the month, fifth of the month, you're not going to receive a check. And if you are strapped for your money, and that is your money, <laughs> we're going to be in worlds of trouble. So, family, it's not about just uh, this game that they're playing. It's about us as a consumers, as the people they're supposed to represent to make sure we're healthy, can feed our families, and take care of ourselves. This bill needs to get passed. Now, Biden is talking about potentially now, what is this poison pill or this other alternative that they can do if the Republicans don't come around, uh, Mr. Leo Brazil? I don't know. You, well, I don't know what poison pill you're talking about. Mr. Leo Brazil. Yes. If the Republicans do not help pass this bill and the the Democrats are saying that we have an anti, uh, uh, anti. What are they doing? Filt, uh, 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 where they're on the floor. They're saying no, we're not going to pass it. Uh, what is that? I just lost my thought on that. Um, mm, well, we're going to do go to commercial break. And believe me, family, I'll come back because I have it here in my paper. <laughs> So stay with me, Leo. We'll come back, and I'll bring that conversation back and give them that, that, that answer. All right. Family, remember this talk beat Jones. And, again, we're talking like nobody else is talking today. I'm talking to Mr. Leo Brazil from Oakland, California, a two-time council person. And uh, we're trying to pull him out, trying to pull some information out that those of us who are sitting at home who don't understand what other folks are saying, I'm tired of breaking it down. 
Now, Leo is an educated person, and sometimes I'll say something, and he's saying, what do you mean? Well, he can do that because Leo is also a person that is familiar with the street language as well. So we good. Be back after these commercial announcements on Talk B. Jones. Stay with us, please. You wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk B. Jones. And I... <laughs> Mario Willis. Truth. Facts. Evidence. Matter. Log into justiceformariowillis.com. Read for yourself. Hi, this is Lawanda. This is RJ Watkins. Coming to you to bring you some information about the number one detox in the nation, Lemon Burn. Lemon Burn helps to turn the fat into fit. It's for you, a happier, healthier you. Because you know healthy is the new beautiful. An all-natural way to improve your health. It promotes a healthy digestive system, attacks and reduces belly fat, as well as gives you energy. You need to get yours today. Call 313-868-6612. Don't forget to exercise and eat right. You wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones. And I... <laughs> Oh, man, I'm so excited to be back. I'm excited to be back, family. You know, I love coming to talk with you. I come loved. You can also, you can call. Uh, let me give you that number. That number, 313-868-4336. Try the 313-868-4336. And we're talking a little politics. Talking a little politics. We're not just staying right here because... Uh, let me bring Mr. Leo back here. Leo? There we go. Leo? Yes. Okay. Coming back, remember family, to Talk B. Jones, we're on the air every Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And also on Sunday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. on channel 15.2. We are going to go through and let you know that on Sundays, we're here from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and also on Sunday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. on Sunday nights. Mr. Leo Brazil, uh, the question I was asking was the word is filibuster. And uh, the Republicans are using the filibuster to threaten this bill, potentially with Joe Biden. What is the option for the Democrats? Do they have an option? The option is, is to change the rules. Okay. The filibuster is a rule. It is not a law. It is not part of the Constitution. It is the, it is the Senate. And they said, this is how we're going to operate. You have to have a majority of people on the floor in order to vote, so there's a hundred, there's a hundred people in the in the Senate. Mm -hmm. You need fifty-one in order to conduct business. That's the majority. If you don't have fifty-one, then somebody calls the roll, and if you are short, then you have to go in recess until you get a quorum. Okay. So what they do? Oh, oh, wait, wait, just a moment. Remember, we're walking some people through this. And I know this is not what is, oh, he's not laughing. He's not doing the comedian thing. He's not being way out there. 
the thing is, is that we have folks who don't understand when you say take a recess to reset until they are able to do what? Now, when they say take a recess, that's taking a break. And what do they do when they're taking a break, Mr. Leo Brazil, or recess? Well, again, uh, it, it's, it's all very complicated. And Just, that's why it, it's hard to come up with language that makes it simple for people to understand. All I'm saying is there are two houses, the Senate and the House. Nancy Pelosi is in charge of the House as the Speaker, and Chuck Schumer is in charge of the majority in the Senate. The two houses have to both vote for a law in order for it to become a law. And if there's disagreement between the two houses, then they have to bargain back and forth. And that's what they're doing right now, bargaining with each other. Okay. Two different bills are being played against each other, and Republicans are using the rules of the Senate to block everything. And the only way you're going to get it unblocked now, now is to change the rules. Now the and rule the Democrats have to change the rules since they're the majority. But they have two Democrats who won't go along with the majority, Okay. so they only have 48 of the 50 votes that they need to even change the rules to be able to move where we want them to go. Can you hold it right there? So are you are, are so are you saying that even though they talk about they want to potentially change the rule, they don't have enough votes to even go into changing the rules? Right. So so what so that option is off the table or they just got to continue to work on those two people to try to get them to change their minds and they Joe Mankin Joe Mankin well, whatever Well, I said is. if you if you see any clear then you can see what you have to do. Mm -hmm. If you need you got 50 votes out of 100. The one, the 51 votes happen to be the vice president who votes in ties. So the vice president is Kamala Harris, a Democrat, so she's going to vote with the Democrats. The Democrats got 51 votes potential. Mm -hmm. But there are two Democrats who say, okay. I'm not going to even go along with the Democrats. So they only got 48 votes. Okay, we're aware. Okay, you, you hit that. Now, where we're trying to go is... The process is now is saying they don't have enough votes. They don't have the 51 votes. Now we're the hearing change the, the change rules. And so now you're saying they don't have enough votes within the Democratic Party to even deal with the filibuster. Right. So is there a third option or, or are they out of options or how does that work? Well, again, if, if, if the rule says you got to do something, you either got to change the rule or you got to live with it. But I'm saying you just said they don't have the votes to change the rules. So they got to live with it. Okay, so they live with it, but I'm saying we are in a in a in a loggerhead. If they if they can't get if they can't stop the filibuster, if they can't change the rules, then are you telling us that the Republicans are not only in the driver's seat, but they got the key? to turn the engine on or off? They're holding you hostage. You guys are the majority, but you can't do anything. And that's what we're here for, to stop you from doing anything. So is that why Mitch McConnell was kind of uh, smirking at his last uh, conversation with, with the press? He's smirking. He's he, he using his power. I don't have the power to stop you from doing something. You're going to roll over you. If I have the power to stop you from doing something, I'm going to stop you. And that's what Mitch is doing. You can't change the rules unless I let you, and I'm not going to let you unless you give me what I want. So the Republicans, so when they're saying this is going to have to be, the, 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 the uh, Democrats are going to have to walk this and make this by themselves. Uh, that's what he said. And they say, well, well we, we, we need a procedural thing just to let the creditors know that everything is okay and we're going to work this out, let's roll over the debt. That's another bill that comes up to roll over the debt. Mm -hmm. They said, no, we're not going to do it. You're going to have to do it on your own, I mean, Democrat. Mm -hmm. We're not going to help. They said, but, but that's your job. You're supposed but, to help us run the government. Uh, okay. Uh, we, we they, Republicans don't believe in government, so why would you expect them to help you run it? Now, we got that. We got the futility of that. The futility is bad. 
so this is something that we're going to look at, see how they play this out. Uh, let's go into real quickly about the elections. Uh, there is something about uh, who's going to run against uh, Calvin, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Newsom. Who are they trying to get put up to run against him again now? Do you have an idea? Gavin Newsom? Yes. No, the Republican, the Republican Party is just about wiped out in California. So the question then is going to be who's going to primary Gavin Newsom in the Democratic side, not the Republican. Mm. Okay. And that's where we're heading with the, with the Republicans. The Republicans wouldn't let their junior partners, all the racists that was in the basement, come upstairs to the living room. So the racists came over and took over the living room and took over the party now. Well, the same thing is happening on the Democratic side. Democrats have kept the progressives quiet in the basement for the longest, and now the progressives are coming up to the living room trying to take over. So there are going to be fights within the Democratic Party, just like there were fights in the Republican Party between the Tea Party and the Republican regulars. Now, when you say it, now, can the Republican Party, I mean, excuse me, can the Democratic Party afford this in-house fighting that's going on? Because I see that I see that I see that I see the, the Republican hmm? question is, can you afford to hang with the Democrats who, are, who can't get delivered what you want them to deliver? That question that you just asked, can I a week stand with the Democrats? Was that your question? Yeah. What are your options? What is your options? <laughs> you don't have any options except those two parties. And if the two parties are messed okay. up and they're not functioning, that means the Democrat, the democracy is not functioning. That's why they keep telling you our democracy is in danger. The whole world is watching to see if America can make this noble experiment work of self-government. If you can't self-govern, then somebody got to come in and dictate to you, and that's what the Republicans want, a mm. dictatorship. And we say we want to self-govern, but when we come time to self-govern, we can't even talk and get along with each other to decide what the rules are, which side the chairs are going to be. When you hold on, please. Caller, you're live. Hello? There we go. Caller, you're live. Okay, let me try it this way. Caller? Caller? There we go. Caller, you're live. You Got to talk to me. Hold on, let's see if we're doing this way. Leo, are you back? There we go. Leo, are you there? Hello? Hmm. Hello? Uh-oh. Leo? Hello? Okay. Hold on just a moment. Let me try with my man again. My friend, whoever it is. Okay. Call it your life? Hello? Oh. Uh, hold on, caller. We're going to come back to you. Hold on. Three six. So, uh, Leo, hold on just a few moments here, and uh, we're going to make it a quick adjustment. And uh, caller, you hold on. I'm going to see if I can bring you on in just a moment here. Three six. Okay, caller. Caller, you're live. We got three six. Hmm. Caller, family, we're working with a different system, and we're getting the calls here. Caller, you live? I'm gonna go through these buttons and see what we come up with. Caller, 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 caller. It says on on the air. Hmm. They're here. I see them here. I can see it. Caller? Well, family, I don't exactly know what's happening with that line, so let's try it, Leo, again. Leo? Mm -hmm. Leo? 
Hmm. There we go. Leo. Leo. <laughs> Leo. Leo. Family, I guess we call this the tap tap family family. Can we find the system that make the telephone go hello? So let's try it again. Let's go next. Caller, you're live. Caller, you're live. No caller that I can bring up. And I have both callers here. That line is there. And that button should bring them on. Leo, are you there? Leo, are you there? Anyone there? Anyone there? Anyone there? Hello? That line just hung up. I, now, I heard the line hang up. <laughs> Was that funny? Uh, they're not scared of Billy Jones. They might be scared of Leo. But I don't think nobody in Detroit is scared. We don't handle scary people in Detroit, y'all. Let's get that's real clear. Leo, trying to bring you back. I'm here. Uh huh. Let's see. I don't. Okay. So what I what I picked up there was on this system. We're not. We'll talk about it a little bit later, family, and get that together. But what I, what I see is I can get this one call going, and that's Leo, uh, whomever that was on the four. If you try to call back. Uh, help me out moving forward and see if I can get you on the line. We're doing some things technically with the telephones, checking things out on this uh, system. Hold on, please. Let me try it again. Thank you, caller. I see you're here. Caller, are you there? Caller, are you there? Caller, can you hear me now? Caller, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, good. I've just brought you back. That's what happened. Uh-oh, caller's gone now. Caller, call me back, please. Uh, help me out. Help me out. We want to get this together. I know it's on TV. I know it's part of my program, et cetera. However, but we want you to know, family, this is live. This is real. And uh, we want to make sure that program that's coming on after me will have this knowledge about this telephone system as well. But Leo, there we go. Leo? Yes, sir. Okay. There's my caller. So, Leo, hold on. Let's try it again. This is why this caller is not coming through. Call, can you hear me now? Call, can you hear me now? Okay. Caller, can you hear me now? Okay. Caller, I'm, I have to apologize that uh, for whatever the reason that we're not able to bring you on. This is very different for me because I've never had. Hello? 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 Caller, I'm so sorry. We're at the last part of the program, but I appreciate you trying to get in. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, the system will be in place by the next time we're here on a Wednesday at 10 o'clock. So please try back again next Wednesday. Thank you. Uh, Leo? Yes, sir. Okay. We're down to the last few moments here in the pro in the program i want to say to the family out there that we apologize not being able to bring on the other caller but again we are seeing this is another different caller that's trying to get in so we've had four or five different calls trying to get in i thank you family for trying to get in and i'm going to see if i can work this again okay caller caller okay i'm going to do this call i'm going to hang up on you but I want you to stay with me just a moment because I'm going to want you to do what I'm going to say to Mr. Leo Brazil. Mr. Brazil, because, oh, here we go. Mr. Brazil, there we go. Mr. Brazil. Hello? <laughs> yes, Mr. Brazil, I'm going, yeah. to let you, I'm going to let you go now because I need to have this other call call on this line all to right. find out if there's a problem. But I appreciate all that you bring, and I love you and appreciate you, and I'll see you back next week, okay? All right. Let me, okay. Caller, call me on 
0351. Anyone there can call me on 0351. I want to make sure that that line is working. Make sure for our programming as we move forward that I've understood what's going on here. So please call me at 0351. And I want to make sure that we get this in before the program is over with. So please cooperate. Help me out. Help a brother out. There we go. Thank you. Caller. Hello. Can you hear me? I hear you. Yes. Thank you so very much. This button, I see. I'm going to have to put, keep my finger on the button, Tim. This, this button continues to come back up. Okay. So I see we have something going on with the button. Talk to me, sir. Uh, please, i give you the last three minutes to just talk yeah, to yes, me. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll go quickly because mm -hmm. something going on with these phones. I got it together. Thank, you for, mm -hmm. thank, thank you for taking my Hello? Yes, I got you. Just go ahead and talk. I got you. Oh, oh okay. It's a lot of static. I'm just going to speak and hang up. That'd be good. Uh, thank you for taking my call, Dr. Talk. Uh, two quick things. One, you mentioned about supplies and things. Malik Shabazz? Myers. Malik Shabazz? Yes, Myers is increasing the self-serve checkouts, which means less jobs. Less jobs. Stop using self-serve and go where there's a man or a woman at the register. And then lastly, Sunday at 3 p.m. at East 7 Mile and Woodward and the uh, West 7 Mile and Woodward. We're going out, pass out flyers about Deion Denby, Mr. Father, and we're going to clean up the filthy trash at those uh, intersections there. So I wanted to get that out there. I want you to do real quickly. I got about a two minutes, and I want to do real quickly. Your programs is on Saturday from 7 a.m. to 8. That's the Teacher's Lounge. You're on the air yourself, Mr. Minister Malik Shabazz. You're on from 8 to 10. And, of course, you have uh, Professor Confente, Confense. He's on from 11 to 12. Now, the reason I rushed through, because I want you to quickly hit the date of your celebration release. Hit that real quick. Oh. Uh, well, we're 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 uh re re we're we're changing the date on that. So okay. I'll get back with you. But thank you. Okay. Now, but what we're trying to do is make sure, family, we understand that we got a fighter, we got a warrior, who's been doing this almost thirty five, forty years, and uh, again, we're ready to give him his roses while he's still out there fighting and marching. Right now, we respect you. We will love you. We appreciate you, Minister Malik Shabazz. And uh, I will be there Saturday to back you up on your program uh, from 8 to 10. On Thank you, Bill. Anything? I appreciate you, brother. Anything? Thank you. Oh, by the way, have you talked to Mary Waters? Uh, uh, the other day, yes, I did. And uh, how is her campaign coming, and is it moving forward? It's picking up steam. Mary Waters? Is picking up steam. One of those two council spots is going to be hers. Okay. And it's my hope and prayer that the other one is Coleman Young Jr. Okay. So you like, and you've invited everybody. I want people to understand that you have invited everybody to come to your program that's running for the offices. And, the week. Yes. and on this program, we also invite anybody that's doing whatever at this point to do whatever they want to do. Call. Let's talk. Yes. But we are saying. Equal time. People who have invested talk time with you is Mary Waters and whom else? Oh, Coleman Young? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I'll take that to the bank. It sounds good to me, but I got to go. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Thank you. And I'll Be see blessed. you. Okay. We'll see okay. you Saturday. Thank you, brother. Bye appreciate bye. it. Mm -hmm. Family, once again, I appreciate uh, you staying with us during these times of pearls. That means that the telephone was like, but you see, I got it figured out, Tim. I'll tell you about it. Family, this has been the Talk Beat Jones. We want you to make sure that you share the information because you see, we don't talk about just what everybody else is talking about. We're trying to educate. We're trying to entertain you, trying to get those folks who don't have the ability to understand what everybody else is saying. But at the same time, for those who can understand what everybody else is saying and got a message, this program is for you. Talk Beat Jones. Every Wednesday from 10 to 8, from 10, <laughs> I want to go all day, from 10 to 11, and a repeat broadcast from 8 to 9 on Sunday nights. Love you, appreciate you, got mad respect for you. Talk Beat Jones. Share it, love it, 
be a part of it, be about it by now. You wouldn't have to go anywhere because this is the Talk Beat Jones and I. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.